Welcome to this Google Drive screencast where we're looking at how to organize and access work with students. Specifically in this screencast, we're going to take a look at using Gubrick to digitally fill out a rubric and put it in a student's Google document. So if you're watching this video, you first have to run Doctopus to distribute files to students, and Gubrick is a piece of that. So if you have not done Doctopus yet, I highly encourage you to go watch that video and learn what you can about that, and then Gubrick is an extension of Doctopus. So here I am in my Google Drive uh, with Doctopus. I distributed all of these assignments to my students. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to digitally uh, complete a rubric that will get deposited in that document for that student. So first thing that you have to have is you do have to have a rubric as a Google spreadsheet. So I'm going to open up this sample one that I have here. Uh, for this particular assignment, my students have to write a movie script a little video script for a screencast they're going to create. And so this is the rubric for that script. So the rubric does have to be in this format where uh, the first cell has nothing and then starting with B1 through, I'm not actually sure how far you can go out, um, but you do have your point values. So and it doesn't matter what these numbers are, it could be 1, 2, 3, 4 as you see here, it could be 5, 10, 15, 20, the numbers don't matter, they just, just have to be um, uh, numerical values fit in there. Down the left side, you have your different categories that you're grading for, and then your rubric uh, kind of qualifiers are here that you'll choose when you grade your student's rubric. So again, this is a Google spreadsheet. You don't have to do anything with colors. Actually, the colors don't carry over. Um, I just did that to kind of point out what was what. So I'm going to close that. So to get started using Gubrick, you first have to open the spreadsheet where you ran Doctopus. So this in the previous video, I used this uh, NM script roster. I'll make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on here on screen. Under the Doctopus menu, one of the choices there is attach Gubrick. I'm going to go ahead and click that. What this asks for first is uh, you do have to do two things in order to use Gubrick, and you do have to do this in the Chrome browser. So if you're not in the Chrome browser, you need to quit whatever browser you're using and make sure you're doing this in the Chrome browser. This only works in Chrome. Step one is I have to install the Gubrick Chrome extension, so I'm going to click that link. It's going to take me to the Chrome Web Store, hopefully right to the Gubrick extension. This just allows uh, Gubrick to work, so I'm going to click Add to Chrome, and I'm going to click Add for that. This will make it so now Gubrick is installed. You'll see it when you're in a Google document. You'll see this little eyeball appear here. That's the logo for Gubrick. And so I'm going to close that window, close this window, close this tab. I'm back in my roster. And then step two says you have to authorize the Gubrick script to work. So here is the details of it. I'm going to go ahead and click authorize. It's one that I trust. And that authorization says OK. Very small print. I can close this tab. I'm back in my roster, so now I'm ready to proceed on to step three. Step three says I have to select a rubric. It tells me here what I just showed, where the rubric has to have uh, A1 is left blank, numbers, and your, and they do have to be integers, as it says here in the directions, and then your qualifiers. I'm going to select rubric. This is going to show my Google Drive. I'm going to type, because I know the name of the rubric, um, it starts with NM, so you probably have to search for it if it's not showing up in the list. So I searched and chose the new media script rubric. Here's the rubric. You can scroll through this and see that it pulled everything in. And I'm going to say attach Gubrick to this assignment. So what this is doing now is for all students, when I go and open their documents, I'll be able to use this rubric. Behind the scenes here, back in the spreadsheet, now it says that it's finished. What it did was it created a separate tab. So sheet one was all my Doctopus stuff here. This is all my students' uh, first, last names. Here's links to all their assignments. This separate tab just got created, this rubric scores tab. As you grade each student's assignment, that information is going to come in here. So again, it's all in one place for the teacher, which is great. So let's go back to Google Drive. You can either go to a student's file from the link here, or if you're in the particular folder, you can open the file from that folder. It doesn't matter how you get there. I'm going to open uh, student Watson, her last name there. So we're going to pretend that she has gone through and completed this entire um, assignment. And now I want to run the rubric to grade this. So when you're at the document, since I've installed that rubric extension, I see here's the little eyeball. I click that. Because the rubric has already been attached, 
now it will appear in this drop down menu. So here is the rubric. So now I can go through these boxes and just type in the number I want to award for that category. So let's say she got a four for this. It also grays in the box. If you do a, a number in the middle, so if I do two and a half, it actually grays both of them. Uh, let's say she got a three here and I give her an overall of a, f of a three. Okay, I can do comments in here. I can type a personalized comment. Here's my comment to my student. I'll just leave that there so we can see where that goes later. You can, by default, this is checked email the rubric to the student, or you can uncheck that if you don't want to send an email for whatever reason. I'm going to choose to uh, send the email, submit and paste to the document. So what this is doing now is the rubric is going to get put at the bottom of this document. The rubric only gets put at the bottom of a Google document. Um, so if you were to do a spreadsheet or a Google presentation, um, you can still use this. It's just there, the, the rubric doesn't get put in anywhere for the student. It'll get emailed to them, um, and then that data will still go into the spreadsheet for you. So you have to wait till it says here, proceed to next document. Now you can click out of this drop-down window. If I were to leave this window at any time and I hadn't clicked submit, when I go back into the rubric piece, I'd have to refill all this out. So you do have to fill all this out, click submit, wait till it says proceed, now I can click out and it's done. So now looking down this document, here is the rubric. It says the rubric was submitted. It gives the date and the time that it was done. And it also fills in exactly what I filled in. And at the bottom, here's that comment I typed to the student. And this puts it in the document. This also, if we open up the students, uh, let's go over to the student account here. If we open up the students email, you'll also see that the student did receive an email and within that email is the rubric as well. So that's why you can use this with presentations and spreadsheets, um, but they only get emailed it rather than it getting put into the document. So awesome tool for assessment. Uh, you can run the rubric more than once. It'll just keep depositing the new one down below. So maybe you do a rubric assessment midway through a project just to kind of tell the students where they're at and then you run it again further um, for the final assessment and that goes at the bottom. This is also great for standards based grading. Uh, if you're based uh, grading based on standards you could put the standards in here um, as your your categories and then different mentions of, of how close they are to achieving that standard and then use these numerical values as part of your standards. So awesome ways to use this. Another way to use this, a teacher asked, well, what about if the student's giving a presentation and I only want to use the Gubrick piece, I don't want to do Doctopus. You do have to run Doctopus in order to use the Gubrick piece, but here's an example where you could make this work. You would just set up a template that just has a title of the presentation, maybe a little note saying after I grade your presentation, you'll see the rubric here, and then you could still run Doctopus, distribute this to your students, and this will just be where the rubric goes. They don't need to write a whole paper or do something in the document in order to use Gubrick. You could just essentially have a blank document and the rubric will be added in there after the fact. So awesome ways to use this. That is it. Thanks for watching.